welcome to a new video on my channel. Today's topic is Entra ID and must do configuration changes that everyone must do or at least think of. Whether you're using the free tier or premium tier, optimizing your Entra ID setup is crucial to protect and safeguard your organization's digital assets. Today, we will dive into at least five must-do changes that you need to check out. Let's dive into it. Okay, so we'll start up in a dev tenant here. We'll navigate into identity and overview in the Adra admin center. From here, let's go to properties and scroll down to the bottom. Here we can see security defaults. And in this tenant, I have your organization is protected by security defaults. And that's very important. So you need to make sure that if you're running a free tier or you don't have any conditional access policies, your tenant must be protected by security defaults. So if you click on the manage security defaults, you can toggle it uh, enabled or disabled. I currently have it on. So security default, it will automatically be enabled for new tenants and includes protections like multi-factor authentications, meaning that ensuring all users can register for MFA, adding an extra layer of security there. It will also block legacy authentication, prevent the use of outdated and less secure authentication methods. And it will also protect privileged activities, ensuring that critical actions such as accessing the Azure portals require additional verifications. So this is very important to have enabled. Okay, so I switched over to a different uh, dev tenant. So if you Go over to overview again and into properties. You can see that security defaults is not enabled or anything because your organization is currently using conditional access policy, which prevents you from enabling security defaults. So it's very important then to create a conditional access policy. So if you go down to protection and under conditional access, you see that we need to have some additional policies. So I have some policies here. Uh, at least one at the moment. Uh, I have the global uh, policy for identity protection going for all applications on any app, any platform and granting access as long as I have an MFA token. And also you need several other uh, policies. You need uh, at least the blocking uh, legacy authentication. You can restrict access based on location. Uh, and so on. So very important to have. The next thing we have to look, out, look on is the, uh, if you now get back to overview and properties, you see how we have an option called access management for Azure resources, meaning that any global administrator in the tenant can elevate into being a user access administrator uh, on all Azure resources, on a tenant root level. So it's important to toggle this off, only use it when it's actually needed. And of course, you need to monitor the usage of it. So that's the number two part. Number three, guest user access. Let's go down to users and user settings. Here you see guest user access. And uh, by default, guest users have uh, have uh, access to view properties and membership of directory objects, meaning that they can browse the Entra ID. Regular guest user can browse the Entra ID. That's crazy. So we need to restrict it down. Guest users uh, should be restricted to pro to their own property and membership of their own directory objects. Most restrictive. Very important. Next thing. Scroll a little up here, default user roles. Users can register applications. No, let's turn that off. Restrict non-admin users from creating tenant. Yes, let's turn that on. And users can create security groups. If you have that on, they can create their own security groups. It will be a mess in your entry ID. So keep this like this, save it. Uh, a little bonus here, if you jump into groups and group settings, you can see we have the same thing here, security groups, Microsoft 365 groups as well. So this one, this setting was not in the other uh, user settings pane, 
But if you restrict this one, that means that no one can create a Microsoft Teams, a planner, and so on. So really think about when you're restricting this one, because if you're restricting it, you need to have some sort of way for users to order a new Teams team or a new planner and so on. Everything that's, that needs a Microsoft 365 group, SharePoint site as well. So yeah, really important to think of security groups, 365 groups. Should the users be able to create it by themselves using Portal, API, or PowerShell? Next one, authenticate, authentication methods. So let's scroll down to protection and authentication methods. From here, we need to be sure that we only have activated and enabled the ones that we are using. So for instance, I have turned off SMS because I'm not using SMS as a multi-factor authentication in my setup. On the other side, I have enabled passkeys. It's really easy to do it. Just click into passkeys, enable it. You can do some configuration, self-service setup, enforce the station, enforce key restrictions, restrict it to, to specific keys. I've done that, and I've also uh, enabled Microsoft Authenticator, so I can use passkeys on Microsoft Authenticator on iOS and Android. And you see, I have added some more uh, AA grids here as well. That's for my YubiKeys uh, Feed02 keys. So it's really easy to get started with Feed02 and passkeys. So I really recommend looking into that. Also, be sure to just use the, the authentication, method, authentication methods that you actually are using. So a little extra uh, thing to look at here dive into settings in authentication methods. Have a look on the report suspicious activity. This is default settings for Microsoft, meaning that Microsoft managed, meaning that if Microsoft want this feature to be turned on, it's on. If they want it to be turned off, it's off. But you can choose. You can choose to disable it or enable it or have it as Microsoft managed. So I recommend having it enabled, letting users report suspicious activity, and also jumping down to system preferred multi-factor multi authentication, put this also to enable. This will uh, force users to use the strongest authentication method that they have registered for their user. That's it. At least five must do configuration sh changes. Most important things to do is security defaults, conditional access, and authentication methods. So in conclusion, by implementing the recommended changes, such as enabling multi-factor authentication, leveraging conditional access, fine-tuned user and guest access controls, you can enhance your organization's security posture. But remember, these settings are not just about following best practices. They are about proactively defending your digital assets from ever-evolving threats. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I release new videos. Thank you for watching the video. See you later.